Thank you for watching this presentation on career advice for industrial engineering students. This presentation presents six hints for career success that are designed for current students as well as prospective students and recent graduates. This presentation is by Dr. James Curry from the Lamar Industrial Engineering Department. The views of this presentation are solely those of Dr. Curry and do not necessarily reflect the views of Lamar University or the IE Department. I developed these six hints based on helping students with resumes and job searches during the past eight years. Now, the first thing to understand is how companies search for employees today. Computer systems make submitting resumes very easy. As such, great jobs will have hundreds of applicants regardless of the labor market. So let's say 500 people are looking for 1,000 open positions. Well, each one of those 500 people is going to apply to many jobs. As such, the really good jobs are going to have over 200 applicants. And how does a company sort through the, this large stack of resumes? Well, what most companies do is that they'll give this large stack of resumes, either digitally or in paper, to a junior employee. Now, they're not going to give that employee many hours to look at them. They'll just say, here, look at these when you have time. Now that employee is not going to have much time and he's going to flip through them looking for keywords, looking at the format of the resume and maybe spend 20 or 30 seconds on each resume. And he's going to sort them into two piles. One is a pile for, that will not be considered and then another pile of about 20 resumes for detailed review. He'll give those resumes to his, his boss who will look at them and then sort it down to 10 or so people to call and then they'll bring three people on site for an interview, and then they'll hire one. And understanding this pyramid is important if you want to be effective in job search. And, and your resume essentially gets you to step three. A good resume will get you calls, and then from beyond that, it's your skills talking to interviewers that will get you hired. The good news is that the job market for engineers is robust but you still need to build skills while an undergraduate um, to get the really good jobs that you would like. The average starting salary for industrial engineering graduates is about 65K, slightly over, with near 100% placement for Lamar graduates. And our graduates are finding jobs in a wide range of industries at leading companies. In oil and gas, we have recent graduates going to DuPont and Schlumberger. In aerospace, we have graduates going to Bell, in consulting, we have graduates going to IBM Global Services and Accenture. In automotive, we have graduates going to Honda, Toyota, and Nissan. Um, materials, Georgia Pacific or Dow Steel. And we even have a graduate um, who's going to Walmart um, to work in their logistics group on scheduling transportation. Now the first hint that I want to give you is probably the most important. You have to really understand the job market. And so as a freshman or sophomore, or even a prospective student, you should research the job market for industrial engineers. And the best way to do this is to read 25 postings on Indeed or another website. Um, and, and for the jobs that interest you, look at the technical skills required, the software, and the keywords. And by reading jobs early on, job postings early on, you can then make sure that you have the skills for the particular job that you're interested in. And this is particularly important for industrial engineers. Industrial engineers do many different tasks, including supply chain management, project management, reliability and quality, manufacturing and automation, consulting, sales and safety. And they also work in many industries, manufacturing, oil and gas, transportation, government, healthcare, and even retail. Now, most of our graduates choose to work in manufacturing or the chemical industry, but understanding the job market allows you to make good career choices, and some of these choices you can even make as a student in terms of what areas you want to intern in, what elective courses you want to take, and what information beyond the classroom you want to learn. The second hint is to have fun in school, and this is also very important. Social networks are critical to understanding the job market. Our undergraduates as a group understand the job market for internships, part-time employment, and full-time employment very well, and they share the information well between each other. 
So while at Lamar, consider joining a professional society or other career-related organization. Another important thing is to go to conferences so you can interact from, with students from other schools. And the, the top photo on this, this slide shows some of our students at the regional conference in Arkansas in 2013. Another important point is make sure the professors know who you are. <laughs> professors have a good understanding of the job market and can help you. And by, by interacting with them, and, and it can assist you in, in finding a job and, and giving you advice. Most of the professors in the industrial engineering department would be willing to look at your resume. Um, also, make sure that you know the people at the Career Center and the co-op office within the College of Engineering. The th third hint is to build a great resume. And a great resume starts with a clear objective statement and you have to make it easy to read and understand. Because remember, that large stack of 200 resumes is not going to be read in detail. The person's just going to scan through them for 30 seconds. So you, it, it has to be easy on the reader. And to be easy on the reader, I suggest making sure it has enough white space, blank page area, um, bulleted list, and, and has the appropriate keywords for the job that you're searching for. And you want to build you. It has to be built with skills identified in your research of the job market. So before you try to write a resume, you have to look at the job market, figure out what skills you want, and then uh, are important, and make sure that those are highlighted. What is a clear objective statement? Well, you want to write your own objective statement, but the objective statement should be based on what the company wants. So for instance, if I wrote an objective statement um, that you want to work for a good company where I can grow. Well, the company doesn't care that you want to grow. Or another objective statement to, to find a co-op position where I can grow and learn. Well, the company is not really interested in you, you growing and learning. They're interested in what you can do for them. So just tell them when you're available, what you can do, and what you want to do. And my, my personal favorite way of putting this is something very simple, like to find a co-op or intern position as a, you know, industrial engineer or what other job title you want to put there in the spring of, and then give a date, and then my professional interests are, and then give some of your professional interest. So for instance, you could say to find a co-op or intern position as an industrial engineer in the spring of 2015, my professional interests are supply chain management, inventory control, and quality, or whatever interest would be important for the job that you're applying for. Resumes have to be easy to read and understand. Um, simple format, assume the reader is only looking at it for a short period of time, and assume the reader is only looking for keywords. Uh, make sure it adequately describes your work experience. And any work experience is good. Um, so, so make sure to put, put all the jobs that you've had either in high school or um, early on in your studies here. And make sure to include all your skills. Now I want to show an example of something that's simple and easy to read. And this, this is from my resume. Um, before I came to Lamar, I worked for a company called Vector FCM, which was a, the lead logistics provider for General Motors. I was a senior engineer, and I give the dates. And I'm going to just walk through one of the things that I did at, at Vector. I conducted studies to locate distribution centers, remote sequencing and subassembly centers, and intercontinental warehouse facilities for GM North America, Asia Pacific, China, and GM Europe. The studies guided the procurement of these facilities. Now, I'm really saying two things in that sentence. One is I know how to locate um, warehouses, and the other is that I know how to work internationally. And you want to spend time making sure that you adequately describe what you did at particular jobs. Resumes need to have action words. So whenever you write a sentence, make sure you, say, you, you use action words, such as designed, analyzed, monitored, collected, recommended, conducted, etc. One of the biggest problems I see with students' resumes is not including relevant information. 
So a student gave me their resume and it said they reviewed mechanical drawings, which is a very weak statement. And a better statement would be that they reviewed mechanical drawings in AutoCAD. At least I know what software they used. Now what they actually did was they reviewed piping drawings in AutoCAD to identify problems and, esti to and estimate manufacturing and installation cost. Now this is very important obviously in Southeast Texas where we have a large chemical industry. The word piping is, a, is kind of a key word as well as AutoCAD and as well as cost estimation. So what you want to say is what product, what software tool, why, what were the results. You want to keep it fairly short and concise, but also complete. The next important thing on resumes is you have to spend some time. The first thing, no spelling errors. Um, there are managers who will reject a resume with any spelling error just because they, they want people who care about their resume and or who are very thorough. Um, good formatting, simple formatting with reasonable white space, reasonably reasonable margins. I've seen people get rid of the margins just to shove more information and it makes the resume crowded and more difficult to read. So the margin should be at least three quarters of an inch or a full inch. Make sure it's quick to read. Have at least three people review your resume. Now if you're a student here at Lamar, um, in the industrial engineering department, I and the other faculty members for the most part will review student resumes. The Career Center at Lamar will review them. But it's really critical to have at least three people who, who have an understanding of what is a good resume. Look at your resume, take their feedback, and then improve your resume. Um, I like to sp tell students to spend at least 20 hours on your resume to make sure it's perfect. And then finally to keep it up to date. How do you build a good resume? Well, the, most imp the best way to build a resume is with work experience at co-ops, internship, or part-time employment. And you know, most of our students, almost all of our students, work either internships or part-time or co-op in engineering or engineering-related fields. And any work experience before you graduate will help convince companies that you are a good employee. Your GPA is somewhat important. Um, not as important, obviously, as work experience. Software skills can be important when applying in to some industries. Um, using electives um, can be important when looking at particular jobs. And then finally, certifications, um, things beyond the classroom, can also be helpful. And our Institute for Industrial Engineering chapter does Six Sigma and Lean certification periodically. And to my surprise, um, that has helped some students find employment. Now, co-ops, internship, and part-time employment. You should try to find a co-op position or part-time employment or an internship in your junior year or earlier. You'll be most successful in your search as a junior, but if you find a position earlier, that's great. And the, these positions will help you find a job either at the company that you're co-oping with or a different company. Um, as good news, co-ops pay very good salaries, usually anywhere from $15 to $30 an hour. Um, now, a question that I always get from students is two co-ops with one company better or one co-op with two different companies better? So is it better to work for one company or two companies while you're at Lamar? Now, my, my strong opinion on this topic is that if you do two separate co-ops with one company, it's ideal because it shows that the company will hire you back. And, and just being able to show that a company will hire you back looks really good on the resume when you're applying to that or different companies when you graduate. Um, many local companies hire our students as co-ops who, who work for extended periods of time part-time while in school. So uh, it's common for a student to get a co-op position locally and then continue on with that while they finish up their classes here at Lamar. And, and also some of these students have been able to get senior design projects at the companies they're working for and do a great job. All junior and senior level courses here, here at Lamar in industrial engineering are offered online or on campus and this allows students to work at a particular company for, for multiple semesters. And this is a real benefit um, of the IE department at Lamar. Searching for a job is very similar to fishing. 
Um, first of all, where can you look for a job? At Career Fairs is a very good location, either on campus or at conference. You can go directly to companies' websites. You can go to the Lamar Career Center or the Engineering Co-op Office in the College of Engineering and get, get advice on job search. You can also go to job search engines such as Indeed, Monster, Lamar University also has postings on an internal job search engine and others. Now the reason why phishing and job search are similar is that if you're having problems with your job search, it's either the location, the type of job that you're applying to, or the bait, which is your resume. The fifth hint is to become world class in a particular area. And by this I don't mean the best in the world, but what I mean is to be an effective team member on a project team anywhere in the world. Today companies typically have multiple locations around the world that are similar. For instance, a, a chemical unit in Beaumont, Texas may have a sister unit that's the same unit in Singapore and they may have one in Dubai. So as a goal in your career should be that you can work with people from different countries and that you can also work in different countries um, based on your knowledge of your particular area. Now industrial engineering is too wide a topic to become world class in every a aspect of industrial engineering. So you want to be good in a particular area and some examples of areas would be rail transportation planning, safety in a chemical plant, project management in the chemical industry, automotive logistics, manufacturing engineer in a paper mill, and automation with Rockwell software. Now you don't become world class right out of school, but one of the important things about your initial job search is you're trying to find an area where you can excel and become a, a highly productive member of a team at a global level. The final hint is that a bachelor's degree in engineering is a terminal degree. You can go to grad school and for some it's a really good idea and get a PhD or a master's degree in engineering or an MBA or a JD or an MD. But if you get a PhD in engineering you're still an engineer they just happen to call you doc. So it's important to realize that when you are in the program that this may be your final degree before joining the professional environment and that you should have a sense of professionalism and that you should be getting prepared um, for a few years after you join the program um, people taking your recommendations seriously and as a professional. So as soon as you leave your opinion carries significant weight just, just by, the, by the degree itself. And so the final joke is what do they call a person who graduates with the lowest GPA? in engineering. Well, they call that person an engineer. Um, it just be, might be more difficult to find your first job. Some additional items is that students can use while during their time at Lamar to build their resume. This is a long list, but, but I think it's helpful to go through it one last time. The first thing is find an internship or co-op, which is probably the most important thing. Maintain a reasonable GPA. Use your technical electives to learn specific skills to support you in whatever area you want to become world class at. Really important to study beyond the classroom by going to conferences, participating in professional societies, reading articles, watching videos online from experts. Consider taking the FE exam. And then finally, learn and become an expert with the software tools taught in class. And here at Lamar we teach SAP, which is an ERP system, Excel, um, CAD CAM with CREO, SPSS, and other software tools. And the most important thing is to have fun while you're a student and to, to develop relationships and friendships with, with your fellow students so you can learn about all the opportunities available to you.